guys, welcome back to Empower, and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and this video and all of my videos. So in this video, I wanted to go over disease process that you will see all the time. I see this all the time at work, and that is pneumonia. So I really did my best to include as much information that I could think of that you would need to know in order to care for your patient with this. So I really do hope that you like this video. If you do like it, can you do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up and also post a comment just to let me know. I love getting to know you guys and reading your comments is one of the best ways that I can. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over pneumonia. Lungs consist of small air sacs called alveoli. During breathing, the inhaled air moves through these air sacs, but sometimes due to inflammation of the alveoli and surrounding tissues, these sacs are already filled with pus or fluid, making it difficult to breathe. This condition is known as pneumonia. Pneumonia is easy to overcome by a healthy person, but certain groups of people are sensitive to this infection, such as newborn babies and children below the age of two, elderly people such as 65 years and older, regular smokers, and those with already weakened immune systems, possibly because of certain medical conditions. There are many ways of classifying pneumonia. It can be done on the basis of the part of the lung that has been infected, such as bronchial or lobar, or it can be classified on the basis of how the infection was acquired. For instance, from the community, hospital, or aspiration. Types of pneumonia. Types of pneumonia based on the infected area in the lungs are as following. Bronchial pneumonia is inflammation of the bronchial tubes in which one or both of the lungs gets patches. Lobar pneumonia is another classification in which one or more of the five main lobes of the lungs are infected, including at all of the alveoli in the affected lobe. Another type of classification is based on how the infection was acquired. Hospital acquired pneumonia, abbreviated as HAP, is if the pneumonia was acquired after being admitted in the hospital for another reason. It is hospital acquired pneumonia which is more serious as the patient already has another medical condition. Community acquired pneumonia, which you'll, you will see abbreviated as CAP, is acquired from the social surroundings and does not involve the healthcare facility or hospital. Ventilator associated pneumonia, which is abbreviated as VAP, is a type of pneumonia that a patient may develop when they are on a ventilator. A ventilator is a machine that breathes for a patient, but sometimes due to several different reasons, the patient may become exposed to a different disease causing agent, which may ultimately cause an infection in the lungs or pneumonia. This is why it is so important to use sterile technique when suctioning or coming in contact with a patient's tracheostomy. Opportunistic pneumonia is when the infection is caused because of a weakened immune system due to another medical condition, for instance, AIDS, organ transplant, etc. It occurs due to organisms that are actually healthy for the body and not harmful. Aspiration pneumonia is another type. This is caused by inhaling liquids, foods, and saliva or vomit causing a bacterial infection in the lungs. Organisms responsible for causing pneumonia include a virus, for example, the influenza virus, is a major cause of viral pneumonia in adults. Although it is usually not severe, but in some cases the influenza virus can cause severe pneumonia. For example, in sudden acute respiratory syndrome, also known as SARS. Bacteria is one of the main causes of pneumonia in adults, and the most common bacterial pneumonia is streptococcus pneumonia. Mycoplasma is another cause. These are organisms containing traits of both bacteria and virus, but do not belong to either of the categories. Pneumonia caused by mycoplasmas are usually not severe. Fungus can be another cause. Fungi usually doesn't cause illness, but some of them, such as histoplasma, cryptococcus, and coccidiois, can cause pneumonia in certain people whose immune systems are already weak. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms of pneumonia differ in every patient depending on the cause of the infection and the patient's state of health. However, some common signs and symptoms are as following. Coughing, possibly with the production of sputum. In bacterial pneumonia, the sputum is green, yellow, or red-brown, while in virus, or mycoplasma pneumonia, the sputum is thin and whitish in color. Other signs and symptoms can include sweating, fever and chills, 
shortness of breath, increased breathing rate, chest pain that gets worse with deep breathing, also known as pleuritic pain, muscle pain and weakness, diarrhea, vomiting or nausea, delirium or confusion, cyanosis, which is caused by blood that is not well oxygenated. In some cases of bacterial pneumonia, all or some of the parts of the lungs are filled with fluid. But unlike bacteria, viruses work by inflammation of the lung tissue itself instead of causing a consolidation of liquids. Diagnostic Test Initial steps of diagnosing pneumonia includes analyzing the medical history and physical examination, such as listening to the patient's lungs using a stethoscope. In areas of the lungs containing liquids, sounds can be diminished or there could be a crackling and wheezing. If the patient is suspected to have pneumonia, the following tests can be carried out to make a more accurate decision. Sputum test and blood test. These tests can confirm the presence of pneumonia and find out which organism is causing the infection, which will help determine the best antibiotics for the bacterial forms of the infection. A chest x-ray is also a great diagnostic tool. This does not indicate the organism causing the infection, but it does confirm the presence or absence of fluid as well as indicates the location and expanse of the infection. CT scans are also used. A CT scan is almost the same as an x-ray, except that the images of the lungs will appear much clearer and more accurate. A bronchoscopy may also be necessary. This is a test that is preferred in cases where the antibiotics are not effective. It includes the insertion of a thin lighted tube into the main air passage, so a tissue sample can be obtained through this test. It also helps visualization inside the air passages. A pulse oximetry is also used, which determines the amount of oxygen is in the bloodstream. Treatment. The Joint Commission collaborated with centers of Medicare and Medicaid, along with other associations, have developed performance measures for the care of patients with pneumonia. Currently, the core measures can be found on the Joint Commission's website. Although it is important for the nurse to follow the protocol at the hospital where he or she works. The core measures usually include the drawing of blood cultures prior to the administration of antibiotics and the delivery of antibiotics within the first six hours following the diagnosis of pneumonia. Pneumonia is treated based on the severity and the type of the infection and the patient's age and overall health condition. Some of the treatments are as following. Antibiotics are the optimal medication. It fights both fungal and bacterial pneumonias and should be taken as prescribed. Otherwise, the infection can pick back up again. In order to determine the right antibiotic, the following factors have to be considered. Types of bacteria causing the infection and the chances of resistance of the bacteria to the antibiotics. When it is viral pneumonia, antiviral medications cannot fight bacterial pneumonia. Therefore, if it's a viral infection, antivirals must be used. Complications Certain complications can arise by leaving pneumonia untreated for prolonged periods of time. The risk is higher for those groups of people who are more sensitive health-wise. Some complications can include a lung abscess, which is a condition in which a cavity is formed by pus in the lungs. The pus is removed by a minor surgery in which it tube or long needle is inserted into the abscess to drain it. But in less severe cases, antibiotics can also treat lung abscesses effectively. Bacteremia. This is a condition that occurs when the infection is spread from the lungs to other organs of the body through the bloodstream. This may lead to organ failure and sepsis. Prevention. Usually pneumonia can be avoided by taking certain preventative measures, such as proper hygiene, such as hand washing properly and regularly. It prevents the ordinary respiratory infection that can possibly lead to pneumonia. Staying healthy and physically sound. A sound health means a strong immune system that can fight against disease-causing organisms, including pneumonia. A healthy, well-balanced diet and physical exercise can also help increase your immune system. Quitting smoking. Quitting smoking increases the chances of fighting against infections before they take hold. During smoking, the lung's natural defense system faces a lot of damage and negative impact by the smoke and chemicals of the cigarette. Vaccination is is also another effective measure against pneumonia. For newborns, the pneumococcal vaccine was recommended to prevent infections caused by streptococcus pneumonia. For immunocompromised adults with long-term medical conditions like COPD, diabetes mellitus, renal failure, and HIV, the vaccine is also recommended. It is also recommended for adults age 65 or older in order to also fight against the disease-causing organism streptococcus pneumonia. Lastly, a flu shot. A flu shot can also be administered in order to avoid the seasonal influenza, which can lead to pneumonia. Now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further 
understanding. After the video, be sure to look below in the description section where you can find a link to my website where you'll be able to go over a lot more questions. Question number one. For a quick recovery, the nurse educates the client with pneumonia of the appropriate following discharge instructions, which include all except A, drink plenty of fluids, especially water, to help loosen mucus in the lungs, B, stay home until the body temperature returns to normal and you have stopped coughing out mucus, C, discontinue medications as soon as you experience diarrhea, or D, get plenty of rest and avoid overexertion of energy. One of the main problems with pneumonia and other infections is that when patients start feeling better or has an adverse effect of the medication, they stop taking antibiotics abruptly. This can make the infection start to regrow and maybe even get worse. Therefore, the whole course of the antibiotic should be finished, but if the client experiences an adverse effect like diarrhea that does not go away, he or she must notify his physician to have his antibiotic shifted or changed. Question number two. Which of the following admitted clients has the highest risk of developing hospital-acquired pneumonia? A. A 54-year-old client diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. B. A 47-year-old client post-craniotomy with an endotracheal tube connected to a mechanical ventilator. Or C. A 66-year-old client with a transient ischemic attack on a nasogastric tube. Or D. A 10-year-old client with respiratory syncytial virus. Looking at the answer options, all of these patients could be at risk. With NCLEX style questions, you will see this a lot. Therefore, you have to always select the most at risk. Option A, a 54-year-old client diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is at risk because of the chronic problem of COPD. But let's continue. Option C, a 66-year-old client with a transient ischemic attack on a nasogastric tube. Well, since this is a nasogastric tube, this client is probably not most at risk. Option D, a 10-year-old client with respiratory syncytial virus appears that the client was already admitted with this disease. So this means it is probably not hospital acquired. However, option B, a 47-year-old client post-craniotomy with an endotracheal tube connected to a mechanical ventilator, clients who are on breathing machines and who are admitted to the intensive care units are more prone to, to developing this type of pneumonia, making B the correct answer. Question number three. The emergency room nurse asked the client about the risk factors predisposing him to pneumonia. Which of the following are correct predisposing conditions? Select all that apply. A, chronic upper respiratory tract infection, B, recent surgery, C, immobility, D, smoking, E, increased immunity, or F, aspiration of foreign material. When approaching select all that apply questions, you have to carefully look at the answer options one by one. A, chronic upper respiratory tract infection would make sense because it, they already seem to have chronic lung problems. B, recent surgery. Well, deep breathing after surgery can be challenging due to pain and also from pain medication, which can make breathing more shallow. This is why it is important to teach your, your patient deep breathing strategies and to teach them how to use the incentive spirometer, which helps remind them breathe deep frequently and it also helps them track their progress. Answer C, immobility. In general, immobility can cause major complications in every body system and the lungs are no exception, making this answer correct. Option D, smoking, is another major cause of pneumonia as the smoking chemicals decrease the body's ability to fight infections. And answer F, aspiration of foreign material. The word aspiration in medical terms means the inhalation of foreign material, which many times is fluid or food particles. These substances can get into the lungs and cause infection or fluid buildup. Therefore, the only option here that is not correct is E, an increased immunity, because this would help your body prevent pneumonia, making the correct answers A, B, C, C, D, F, because all of these are predisposing conditions for having pneumonia. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Like I asked before, if you did enjoy that video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, give it a thumbs up if you would like to see more med surge or other disease process related videos. So it's really my pleasure to be here for you and to be able to create these videos for you. My team and I have so much fun doing it. So we can't wait till next time. See you again soon. Love you guys. Bye.